Pennsylvania, and, and the day you get the draft notice, what was your reaction? Draft board said that I could finish the second year in law school, and then I would have to go serve. When I finished the second year in law school, Lynn and I were married. They said, well, that event will let you finish law school. So I finished law school, was admitted to the bar the first week in December of 1942, and I was drafted in the Army on New Year's Eve, December 1942. <laughs> I spent New Year's Eve in the reception center. I was wandering around Paris, nothing much on to do in my mind, and I saw this little sign that said, War Crimes Commission. <laughs> I, that's what I'd like to get in. So I went in the, in the office. There was nobody there but a colonel. I said, Colonel, I'd like to join, I'm a lawyer, I'd like to join the War Crimes Commission. Oh, he says, we've all moved up to Frankfurt. I'm closing this office tonight. There's nobody else here. He said, but here, here's a form, fill it out. So I filled it out and gave it back to him. Went back to the outfit and about, I guess it was about two months later, I got a phone call from Frankfurt, Germany. I said, are you available to come to the War Crimes Commission? I said, yes, I'm available. <laughs> That's how I got to the War Crimes Commission. In France, under General Betts, and in Italy, under General Richmond, trials are underway. As fast as we can identify, hunt down, and apprehend those guilty of war atrocities against American prisoners of war, we are bringing them to trial and holding them accountable for their acts. These trials are not to be confused with the United Nations International Tribunal, which will concern itself exclusively with major war criminals. In Paris, that particular uh, operation was uh, he headed by, or actually, the, you remember they mentioned a guy named Betts? If you remember the General Betts in here? General Betts sort of had overview of this war crimes division, and he... Mm -hmm. uh, Appointed a guy named Leon Jaworski. Yeah, he was my boss. Yeah. So Leon Jaworski. So you have Betts in the movie. Jaworski. He was his boss. Inmates of the concentration camps were released, and as displaced persons came into the Allied lines, whenever possible, they had sat them down and uh, interviewed them, and. Taken, made it, written down their interrogatories, and then they were translated into English. And they had thousands of them. Mm -hmm. And the idea was that by going through those interrogatories and pointing at uh, wherever somebody knew something about what that had, had transpired, uh, they wanted to make a note of it, of the time and place and who it was, because it was our job to read these interrogatories, pick out any evidence of a war crime, any evidence of who it was, and to make out a f three by five file card with that person's name, or at least uh, as much of the name as we could get. And then they developed the card files from that. And from that they compiled who these individuals were that were committing these war crimes. And your job was to see, to put names to the To actually vent, actually vent. Yeah. Having read all those depositions, it must have had a chemical, an emotional action with you. What was it? Many of them made you sick in the stomach because this information would then be passed on, was passed on to the higher echelons in the War Crimes Commission. Mm -hmm. And actually, while we, we hear about and know about the Nuremberg trials, there are actually several hundred other trials, mm -hmm. a few of them before Nuremberg, but a lot of them after Nuremberg, where they had picked up these various persons who'd been responsible for these crimes and tried them. Finally got to see what the trials themselves, the Nuremberg trials themselves. Yeah. Itself. So you actually went to Nuremberg? Yes. You walk into a room, and there are some pictures along the wall here, and 
you're sitting in the gallery like these folks are, and, and over here are the, mm -hmm. the, the 21 the, defendants. Mm -hmm. What was your first reaction? You really want to know? I do. They had, if you can imagine a jury box, they put all 21 defendants in the equivalent of a jury box. Mm -hmm. And standing behind those defendants at attention <coughs> were about a dozen American GI soldiers. I saw a picture one around here just a few minutes ago wearing white helmets. They stood at attention through the entire trial. Hear it every trial, mm -hmm. day of the hearing. And my first reaction is, my gosh, how can those guys ever stay that way? <laughs> <laughs> and I guess my second reaction was to start and try to identify uh, the various ge ger Germans that were, had been indicted and were sitting there, 21 of them, in the equivalent of t what we would call the jury box. Mm -hmm. Opposite them were the justices on raised uh, uh, platform. Do you get any sense when you kind of looked over and you saw Hermann Goering and you'd seen newsreels, you probably, you know, certainly read about him in Stars and Stripes. A any reaction to that? I mean, here he is live. I don't want to really repeat the language of what I th thought about him. Statute of limitations is run. <laughs> 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 no, I just, the reaction was, you good son of a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> Did you have that similar as you're looking down and you can, I mean, literally, I'm, I got the benefit of looking over your shoulder, but seeing Rudolf Hess. Yeah. Uh, he was sitting there with his head down. He, he acted as if he didn't pay any attention to what was going mm -hmm. on. So there comes a time in 1946 when, in fact, now you have 65 points and you head home to your lovely wife, Lynn. Uh, did anybody care about what you were doing? Did anybody know anything about the Nuremberg trial that was still going on? I thought when I got home, everybody would want to know about it. Yeah. Nobody asked me anything about it. It took 50 years. When the 50th anniversary came up of the Nuremberg trials, somebody from Swarthmore College called me and said, you were, your record here shows you were the, did some of the war crimes trials. Will you come and give us a lecture on it? That was the first interest, and since then I've given a number of lectures on it. I think that the, that the Constitution Charter that was written to give the framework for the Nuremberg trials should be kept alive and applied wherever possible. And there are some aspects of that that have made me very unhappy with some things that have happened in the last couple of years in the United States. Mm -hmm. I don't want to discuss that <laughs> publicly further. <laughs> the, the thing that I think I got the most out of the Nuremberg trials was the fact that you had France, England, United States, and Russia all working together to see that justice was being done to those who had committed atrocious crimes. And uh, I've seen other instances where I think atrocious crimes are being committed and we don't have the ability to set up a War Crimes mm -hmm. Commission. That's true. And I would say publicly here now, off the subject, that Guantanamo has had me upset from the day that it was created. As you can see, you're not alone. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, I'm just just thrilled to be having a chance to chat with uh, one of the, one of the greatest generations uh, here. Uh, Edmund Jones, and together with Lynn, I'm so thrilled that both of you could join us and Gene Martinson and this whole squad. And we look forward to your speech tomorrow. But ladies and gentlemen, Ed Jones. Thank you. Thank you.